there really are three projects involved, and uh, the synergy between the projects makes it very difficult to talk about one without talking about the others. Uh, the first project is uh, called CRESIS, and that's the Center for Remote Sensing of Ice Sheets. And the second project is a CIT project. Uh, it is cyber infrastructure for remote sensing of ice sheets. And the third project is Polar Grid, which provides the instrumentation for uh, the other two projects. Uh, the, uh, all of them are funded by the National Science Foundation. CRESIS is developing sophisticated sensors and long-term uh, duration vehicles that will uh, um, allow those platforms and sensors to be deployed in uh, Antarctica and in Greenland. The success of the CRESIS project in developing the sensors and, um, and taking the, the cyber uh, measurements uh, has really created a, a volume of data that just overwhelms current storage capabilities and a current capability to uh, analyze and to visualize the data. And so we found it necessary to address the cyber infrastructure uh, that's available to these polar scientists. Uh, and when you begin a polar, uh, when you begin any cyber infrastructure project, you really also have to address the manpower um, needs of that project. And that cannot be done as an afterthought. It really needs to be done first and foremost to talk about development of the audience, development of the, um, the talent pool that's going to assist in cyber infrastructure deployment. The importance of this research as it relates to uh, global changes in climate uh, was very well summed up in the fourth assessment report that was issued in 2007 by an international panel, panel on climate change. And they confirmed that climate change is a serious global issue and uh, acknowledged that sea level rise was indeed going to be influenced by the melting of the glaciers uh, at our, in our polar regions. Uh, we are in the northeastern corner of North Carolina, Elizabeth City State University is, uh, and uh, our our coastal managers uh, need good information, uh, and that extends not only to our, our little corner of northeastern North Carolina, but to all coastal poor populations in this nation and around the world will be impacted strongly by changes in the glaciers and the, um, and the subsequent sea level rise. It is extremely important that we inspire, that we educate, and we train the next generation of scientists and engineers. Uh, not only do they assist us on a daily basis with the uh, operation of our projects, but they will be the ones who uh, will interpret the long-term uh, impacts uh, for future generations and they will go be the ones to carry on this research. Because uh, this is not a, a, a today, tomorrow, or even decade-long issue that we're wrestling with. This will, in fact, Im impact generations for years and years and years to come. Their children have a stake in this, and their children's children. And so we should equip them as best we can with the skills that they will need to deal with and to interpret the data that we're collecting now. It lets them understand how they can apply their skills, what they're learning in the classroom, and how they can bring their individual perspective to the problems. Um, and, and we need that. We need their individual individuality. Uh, we need their perspective on this project. Uh, we run both an academic year project and uh, where mostly Elizabeth City State University students are involved and it's, uh, it's a very structured program. We meet Tuesday and Thursday evenings every, from starting in September through mid-April and uh, we allow the students not only to 
uh, acquire the vocabulary, but also to understand the platforms that these uh, projects operate on, uh, the different software. Um, uh, they actually handle the data sets, and so they really get their hands dirty. And they, they understand how the lab environment works also. Um, that, that translates into um, movement from undergraduate school to graduate school very quickly. Uh, it allows them to be successful in that move. And they make the move with the assistance of the mentors uh, that they acquire during their projects, both at ECSU and at these other institutions where they perform internships or they um, uh, collaborate with other scientists. So I think it's vitally important that the students have undergraduate research experience uh, so that they can move into the graduate arena smoothly and successfully uh, and because we need them to be as strong as possible academically with a master's degree, with a PhD, so that they can bring all their talents to bear on this problem. I love mathematics. I always have loved the mathematics. I always will love mathematics. And so as, as a, uh, you know, as a middle school and um, high school student, I recall um, thinking that it was the most fun to just find me a calculus book and graph those functions. And I couldn't get my pencil sharp enough. And by the time I inserted the points of inflection and the, um, the intercepts and um, figured out where that function was concave up or concave down and where the asymptotes were and then to see it all come together was just the most pleasing thing to me. I remember asking my father um, when he when he wanted to know what I wanted for my birthday, I wanted a pencil sharpener. I wanted a mechanic because, you know, we didn't have them. We used to have to, you know, take a little knife and shave our pencils. But to have a pencil sharpener meant I could get just the finest point. And he installed it. He installed it in my bedroom on the wall. And I was just a really happy girl. Uh, that was that was supported by a number of teachers who were female minority mathematicians as that's primarily what we had. We had a few males at our high school but our high school gave us uh, a lot of advantage um, in terms of being able to pursue our interests in science. There were not only the selection of courses available that we could take through calculus at that time as well, uh, but there were also clubs and after-school programs, so I didn't have to go right back, right home. I could stay there and I could work on science projects. And one of those science projects was a um, investigation of trigonometric functions, and I actually got to graph all those beautiful trig functions and look at the phases and the frequencies and so forth. Um, and at um, a conference where I had the opportunity to present that. Um, Dr. McDaniels, who was at Virginia State University, came up and he talked to me about my my project. And he really liked those functions, and he made me think a little more about well, what if you what if you added uh, um, an eight? How would it change the, the phase? Or you multi added a multiplier? And um, then he said, if I gave you a scholarship, will you come to college uh, at Virginia State? leave Norcom High School and go to Virginia State. And I said, sure. I would have, at that point, I probably would have followed him, <laughs> you know, taking his suggestion and gone to, uh, gone wherever. I was, I was totally enamored with this man's interest and ability to talk to me about those functions. With regards to the broader impacts, uh, it's going to be very important that the young men and women that we are now involving in this project uh, understand how they can bring closure to a problem that is probably one of the most serious problems that is facing us um, on a global scale. And um, understanding 
how their talents apply is something that I take very seriously and giving them the opportunity to step forward. And the scientists with increases and within the National Science Foundation are uh, have given high priority to this uh, effort. Creases actually devotes probably 40% of their funding to education and outreach. And they start not only with the graduate students who are important because they're the next set of replace, replacers for us, but also the undergraduate students, the K-12 community, and also to the citizen scientists as such. Well, this project, uh, Unique Away to Myself, we worked on the Seismic Tet Walker, which, re which was developed by NASA Space Goddard Center, and we pretty much took the Tet Walker and redesigned it ourselves. We used uh, seismic sensors, which detect vibration caused by explosion, and the data is sent back to scientists, and we used that concept and uh, incorporated it with the NASA Tet Walker. So we used a 3D simulation program called MCS Visual Nanostrand to develop our 3D models of the robot. What interested me was the fact that, you know, learning different things on a daily basis and knowing that what I actually do could help someone in the future with their research. My current project that I'm working on is creating a pool using Condor. With this pool, we'll be collecting data from the other partner institutions with Creases. For the past two consecutive years, I've internshiped at the University of Kansas. My first summer internship was with Dr. Prasad Goganini. And my t project title was entitled Airborne Measurement of Snow Thickness Over Sea Ice. During this internship, I had a chance to, you know, broaden my analytical and theoretical skills as a computer scientist undergrad. And this was very helpful because when I apply for other programs and conferences and internships, they look at me as I'm of a high caliber student and they accept me. I actually had a chance to go to Carnegie Mellon, but I chose Penn State this summer because I know creases impact my life and I know they'll take care of me and I know the research is of high quality and affects the world that we live in. Excellent. When I was younger, I actually had a teacher at Andrew Hamilton, um, elementary school in Philadelphia. Her name was Miss Abdu Salam. In the second grade, she sat me down in front of an IBM computer, and we used to program like little, you know, visualization things, so little turtles would pop up and stuff like that. She was my hardest teacher. I had a C, I would say, at midterm, and then I came out of class with a B, but that was my favorite teacher, and I remember her now. And then when I was in high school, I was um, majoring in hospitality, but my teacher was a computer science major, and she did hospitality, so the link for me is every teacher that I had, they had computer science with another discipline. And then when I was in high school, Dr. Hayton sent me a letter about Sir Sir, the Center of Excellence in Remote Sensing Education and Research. And that's how I got to Elizabeth City State University. If it wasn't for her doing her outreach program and contacting me, I wouldn't be here. My future plans are to receive my PhD in computer science. I want to also have a concentration in remote sensing. And I want to try to obtain two masters, one in computer science and like applied mathematics or something like that. And it, it varies because creases, it actually gives me the opportunity to see graduate students to see what, like, what they're doing right now and what type of research and how their graduate school is going and what type of quality it is. So it makes me look like, well, I can do geography or I can do computer science. I can do a combination of both. And I will come out and be well marketable. I can work in whatever industry or field, or I can be a professor at a college. So it's like creases, they provide mentors, they provide scholarships, they provide a lot of opportunities that a lot of other students don't get. And I'm thankful for that.